But as I was beginning to discover for myself, Tim was a restless and obsessive individual. Ah, there you are, Bernard. Beautiful morning, isn't it? I couldn't sleep, so I thought we might as well make an early start. Here, I brought you a notepad. Now, where did we get to yesterday evening? Three o'clock this morning, actually. Uh, you were telling me about your ideas for supercharging the Bentley. Ah, yes. Well, Mercedes were already at it, you see. So obviously, we needed the extra power, too. But W.O.'s answer was simply to keep making the engines bigger. W.O. was right, wasn't he? You and Bernardo won the next Le Mans with the bigger engine. 1929. The greatest Bentley victory ever. There was no real competition that year. I'd seen Rudy Caracciola race the supercharged Mercedes in Germany. I knew what we were up against. There was no room for complacency. But good God, man, you just won! But it would have been a different story if Caracciola had been racing. Here, Billy, I saved some for you. You've seen the power of the supercharged Mercedes. Oh, here we go again. And there'll be others. They'll tear ahead and we'll be left behind. We have to move with the tides. No, damn it! To stick a supercharger on a Bentley engine is to pervert its design and performance. It will destroy the reputation of Bentley Motors. This is my life's work we are talking about. I am not going to risk losing it all on the whim of a cat-headed playboy. Oh, so you'd rather that we risked our lives than you spoilt the symmetry of your engineering? We still have no proof whatever that it would work. Well, actually, Billy and I are fairly confident. We've been working on it for the past few months. Oh, you have, have you? Well, I'm not going back to square one on your say-so. I'll not do it, and that's fine. In which case, you leave me no alternatives. I'll do it myself. Billy, you have a word with him. Make him see sense. If you don't mind, sir, I think I'll go with him. I imagine that this must be it, Oscar. Tim was determined to prove W.O. wrong. He set up a workshop in Wellin and engaged a team of mechanics under Billy to develop his own supercharged Bentley. He was no businessman, however, and the project proved an enormous drain on the family coffers. Finally, having not spoken to one another for more than a year, Sir Stanley was forced to pay his son a visit. Father. Find us all right, did you? Eventually. So, this is it, is it? Yes, this is it. We started with the standard engine, you see. And then Villiers designed the supercharger for me, known as the blower. This bit here. Well, I hope it's and all been worth it. Well, it will be. This is just a prototype, but the potential is enormous. We're just rebuilding the magneto. Billy Rockall, chief mechanic, my father. Mr. Stanley. All we've got to do now is to solve the heat I said problem. I hope it's all been worth it because you've ruined us. We're practically bankrupt. Have you no idea what all this cost? We can raise some more capital, I'm sure, just until we can show what the car can do. Do you really not understand? There is no more capital and nothing against which to raise it. This obsession of yours has destroyed us. It's over, Tim. Most of the chaps were jolly decent about it, you know. Stayed on working for nothing. They were a dedicated team, but we badly needed funds. You know, for the first time in my life, I realized what it was like to be poor. Drink up. I'll order another. So, how's it going, old man? Making good progress? Excellent. Very good indeed. We should be road testing next week. 
Has the headmaster taken it? He's spitting furious. He's convinced it'll never work. I hope you can prove him wrong. Always plays his cards close to his chest, as you know. And not always by the rules, the crafty old fox. Who's that? The Honourable Miss Dorothy Patrick, the heiress. Mad about the GGs, poor dear. Heiress? I'm in love. No, not her, the other one. <laughs> worth her weight in gold. She must be worth a fortune. <laughs> Wish me luck. number SM3901. Timmy's number one blower Bentley. <laughs> Miss Paget, may I have the honour? Oh, Timmy. <laughs> and so, much to the chagrin of W.O. himself, the blower Bentley was born. Anxious to test its potency against the legendary Rudy Caracciola and the supercharged Mercedes, Tim immediately entered for the tourist trophy in Northern Ireland. The Bentley team had withdrawn their entry after an altercation with the organizers. But many of the Bentley boys had turned up anyway to see Tim's blower in action. Don't let the Germans get you down. What on earth are you wearing? Might I uh, borrow your helmet, Billy? Will I take your place today? See what all this fuss is about? <laughs> Thank you. Do you think this is a good idea, sir? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Good for you, Edmaster. Carachola's Mercedes had seven litres to my four and a half, but I was determined to show W.O. what the blower could do. Although the heavens did indeed open, and Caracciola is an absolute master in the wet. For several hours, I did my very best to match his pace. <laughs> Chola won, of course, a worthy victory. But at least W.O. had now seen the threat for himself. He knew he was in trouble, and that he left it too late to perfect any supercharged cars for Le Mans. Well, not bad. 
didn't win, though. Well, not in this weather, no. But at Le Mans, it'll be different. Maybe. Maybe not. In a minute, Billy. But between us, we could make sure that the Mercedes doesn't win. What are you saying? Come on, Tim, you're a duck shooting man. You know the value of a decoy. You're fast enough to flush him out, force his pace. My team will be there to keep up the pressure. Let me get this straight. Are you seriously suggesting that I should run my own car to the ground in order to take out Caracciola, thus leaving the field clear for you? Not for me, Tim. For England. <laughs> Cunning as ever, W.O. had thrown down the one gauntlet he knew Tim could never resist. But it was to remain their secret that Tim would almost certainly be sacrificing any chance of his own victory for the greater good of his country. The weather could not be finer here at Le Mans today, and as the cars approach the main straight here at the stands, Rudy Caracciola in the Supercar of the Cities must be put by by Captain Tim Bergen in the number nine Supercharged Bentley.
I couldn't bear to watch any more. This has been my last race. My coffers are empty. I do hope you will not think of me as disloyal. We tried, and it was worth it. My love, Dorothy. The pace. On the long, bumpy little Zan straight, Birkin, risking his neck, simply flew past with an unconfirmed 126 miles per hour. What a race, and what a driver. The next two years had not been kind to Tim. His father died a lonely and broken man, and what little remained of the family money had all but dwindled away. Hello? Tackerston Hall? No, I, I'm afraid he's unavailable. May I take a message? Mr. Bentley? Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. Yes, I will. Goodbye. What did he want? He says he's coming down. What? Here? To Tackleston? What does he want with me? There's nothing I can do for him. Taken over by Rolls. Given up racing completely. The end of the Bentley boys. You see, that's what's wrong with this country, Burn. Never taken racing seriously enough. We haven't even got a proper race track, thanks to the Society for the protection of rural England. And so what happens? Public indifference breeds industrial stagnation. So you keep saying, but you still won the next Le Mans. In an Alfa Romeo. Do you know who sent me a telegram? Mussolini. Congratulating me on my historic success for Italy. The British crowd actually booed me. The perfect final chapter. You've got a lady friend, Vern. Well, I... Don't worry. I always carry spares. Thought we might have a party tonight. Empty what's left of the cellars. Celebrate the completion of my book. I think we deserve it, don't you? I'll be about half an hour, Teddy.
whiskey. Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Don't go, Byrne. This is Mickey Byrne, first-class chap. He's writing my autobiography. Byrne? Sir? Not many secrets between us. Please. Tim, I have a... <laughs> We've not always seen eye to eye, Tim, but I've come here to ask you to join me. I've discussed it with Rose, and there are excellent prospects there for you now. Desk-bound, probably, but worthwhile. Money'd be good. Help you to keep this place up, anyway. I'm a racing driver. You know I can't do anything else. Why do you insist on going on when we've all had the sense to stop? Why won't you face facts? You're racing cars you've no love for. Where's the glory in that? Risking your life again and again, and for what? Because I'd rather live at full throttle than die behind a desk. You destroyed Bentley with your bloody supercharging, you know that. That's outrageous, the slump did for everybody. Your damn blow, I never won a single race. Now, when I offer you a helping hand, you have the damned arrogance to slap it aside. God help you, Birkin. Did you get that down, Ben? Make a good epilogue. Don't you think? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Is the business? To my deepest regret, I never saw Tim Birkin again. The following morning, he left for London, and from there he travelled to North Africa, to Tripoli, and what was to be his final race. Dear Byrne, didn't want to wake you again. Thanks for everything, old chap. Go gently. Ever your affectionate, Tim. P.S. Thought of another title. How about full throttle? They gave you no support. They palmed you off with one third rate mechanic, deliberately. Now, what does it matter anyway? 
Who wants to win for Italy, for God's sake? Pass my cigarettes, would you? They're down there. Ah! Ah! Ow! Hell! All right, sir. <laughs> I'm up on the bloody exhaust. Thought I was back in the bloody Bentley. I'm sure you are, sir. <sighs> yes, I'll be fine. Next Thursday at 9.30, our final hero is the British military maverick, Colonel A.D. Wintle.